Hi, so in this lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to make your very own music loops using Studio One. So I have a fresh song here, open, ready to go. Uh, and what we need to do is drag a new instrument into our Studio One panel. So over on the right hand side here, we have instruments. You can get into it either this way or you can get into it using the tab at the top. If you're missing this panel altogether, it's just the browse button in the corner, brings that panel up. And the instruments I'm gonna be using today are the Presonus Presence instruments. The reason I'm using those instruments is because they are the free ones that come with Studio One Prime. When you open up or expand out the Presence instruments, um, there's a lot of different instruments there, or you may have very slim pickings just depending on what you happen to have downloaded into your version of Studio One. If you want more options or you find you don't have enough, just click on Studio One and then Installation. And under Installation, you've got your instruments here. There's the Presence uh, library. And different ones will be available depending on which version of Studio One you're using. Uh, this is professional, but if you're using um, Prime, the options might just be a little bit more limited. But you can see here under Presence, I mean, I've only installed three of the packages. I could go through and install more of those and give myself some more instrument choices if I want. Okay, so just for the example today, I'm gonna pull in an instrument. Um, let's go for a bass. Let's go for this 303 saw. I'm gonna pull it in and I'm gonna make myself a bass loop. Now when you pull in the instrument, obviously it's a bass and, and you get all this stuff which can be da daunting a, as a first time user and you don't really need to touch any of it if you're happy with the initial sound. You can play the keys just using your um, mouse here. Obviously, using a mouse trying to play music in is, is not particularly effect effective and not the ideal way to do it. Um, so we're gonna use the laptop keyboard today. So if I press caps lock, up it comes, and now I can use those keys on the keyboard. That's a lot easier. Okay. Um, I can also sustain the notes, which is like the um, pedal on your piano, if you like. And it will hold those notes on. Okay. I can also bring the octave, the octave here lower, if I like. So I can go to C2. I can take it even lower, C1. Just depending on what you want to do there. And that is the basics to be able to record our loop. So now I want to record something in. I'm just gonna move this one out the way a bit. I can actually close that altogether. I don't need it for the moment. And I'm gonna make my loop four bars long because four bars is a really good um, size. It's easy to duplicate and put things on top of. If your song is in um, three, four time, then you might wanna do three bars instead of four. Up to you. Before I start recording though, it's critically important that I set up my tempo and my metronome first. So I've got a little idea in my head. I'm just gonna have a practice of playing that now. All right, and then I'm, I've got a tempo in my mind now. So and if I click on that tempo on the actual word tempo here, It'll set the tempo at the speed of the song I have in my head. So, all right, so I'm hovering around 135 there. Um, I can also change it manually, 135, just to make a nice round figure. And then it's critically important when I make my loop that I do it to the metronome because if it's out of time and then I duplicate it and use it all over my piece and it's always gonna be out of time and that will be annoying. So I always use a metronome. I can adjust the volume of my metronome here. Um, the accented beat is, is beat one. And then I always put a pre-count, which just gives me two bars after clicking that record button to get ready, get my fingers in the right spot so I'm ready to go. So I do a pre-count. I'm gonna do a pre-count of two bars. That means I'll have one, two, three, four, two, two, three, and then start. Um, just gives me that little bit of time. I can close that now. Metronome's on, I can see, because the metronome icon is blue there. And we're ready to go. Here we go. All right, 
and I changed it a little bit there, but that's okay, it's just a demonstration. So here we are, you can see it's taken in the MIDI notes, I can go back and I can play that back. <coughs> There we go. And notice how it, um, whilst I was still recording out here, it's automatically, because there's nothing in there, it's automatically cut that back to that bar exactly, um, which was exactly what I want. If you go a little bit over, you might want to crop those notes so that your loop is exactly four bars. Because once your loop is exactly four bars, I can right click, duplicate, and I can make as many copies as I want of that. With the duplicate button, um, that's also got a quick key of D, so I use D all the time, so D, 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 and then I've got this ongoing loop that I can use throughout my song. And the great thing about doing this using MIDI is I can then, I can change the instrument to something else, I can go fiddling with the sounds or how it sounds in here. Let's do a little bit of that now. What I do? So I could change the attack, which is how quickly the note comes on. There we go, see how that sounds. Right, I could use a cutoff filter. You could literally spend hours playing with this stuff. So I don't want to go too far into that. Um, the other thing we can do probably um, a good idea to do before you go duplicating them is if you're a little bit out of time or you played an extra note, you can double click on this and it brings up all the notes that you just played. So we can see again if we go to the start. And it has this funky grid and the grid helps me see how close the notes are to being in time. So you can see this one is just slightly off. It should have been on that line. Now it just depends how much humanness you want in your song um, or how robotic you want it to sound. I mean, if you could put these all, you could make them all exactly precise where you want them, um, but then you're going to get a more robotic sound. But you might want something that sounds a little bit more human, so you might want them to be that little bit off, and that's okay. Let's see how that sounds. You can definitely hear it sounding a lot more robotic now. The other great thing about having uh, used a MIDI track like this is later on through my song, I go, actually, I don't like the 303 saw. I would really like to try the DX bass. And you drag that on top, click load, and it just swaps it for you. And you've got the same riff that you just recorded, just in a different sound. Oh, I don't like that one either. I can swap it for something else. Actually, that sounds really funky. I like it. So it's really um, flexible like that. Just be aware, notice it's left the same name, 303 Saws. Um, really, that's just a title now, so it doesn't matter. I could, I could call that whatever I liked. Um, all right, and that is making loops. You can now go and layer loops. You can put um, you know, your drum kit on top of that and whatever you like. Well, I hope you enjoyed that lesson.